Well, what is up, Scrub Fam? I am here with another deck profile. Before I get into the deck profile, I hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, I have finished my Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, it was pretty much just uh, dead to most people that know me. In general, I was spending a lot of time with my family, friends. I spent just a lot of time just relaxing and kind of just recovering from this wild and craziness that was getting ready for nationals and then you know doing all this content and just you know taking some time to kind of relieve myself of the burnout of dragon ball super taking some time away from the game uh, and then finally now just kind of getting back into the swing of things i played a bunch of games this past saturday with my best friend baby girl thomas ingle and i got a deck that i've been brewing working a lot with you know with all the data that's already out there based on the you know similar decks with similar leaders and i kind of just put my own spin on it mostly because of watching a lot of magic content and really just liking to kind of build decks that give me a specific feel and so this is a, it, it basically going to be another example of that but in general shout out to logan cordell if you can't tell by the new background the new wallpaper that i have here uh, he did some new graphics for me updated for me going to go into streaming uh, logan cordell has done amazing work for me from the beginning of my youtube channel up through now and then he's also helping me out like i said i have overlays now for uh the twitch stream that i'm gonna be doing since i hit 400 patrons i'm going to be doing a 12 hour stream here soon uh, which is going to feature a lot of shenanigans and fun hopefully i can make it work it'll be my first one ever so that'd be pretty dope but in general let me go ahead and get into the deck profile because that's what you guys are here for so this is blue black shenron with gogeta not very surprising, right, that Shinron is going to be the leader of the deck. You know, there's stuff that you could do with the Gogeta leader, which that leader is actually really good. And I'll probably end up covering a version of the deck with Gogeta leader at some point. But Shinron allows you to do things that are exactly what a strategy like this wants to do. And the reason why I got the idea to build this deck myself, you know, aside from other people having success with it, was I was watching older Magic content back when Emrakul was in the format. And honestly, the feeling of Gogeta Hero Vibe coming down, it almost feels like Emrakul because the way it works, you know, you have the ability to cheat it out with, you know, this, the union mechanic. And when it comes down, it totally warps the game that is taking place. You know, anything that your opponent has done to gain an advantage whatsoever, anything that they've worked towards, even if they've outplayed you, it doesn't matter. When this card comes down, you're going to completely wipe away any advantage that they do have. You're going to force them to shuffle up, draw three random cards, and they're going to have to start from ground zero with trying to get back of the game and so this deck really tries to push out to the maximum but at the same time similar to those decks that were in magic uh you know with the emerge function there was a lot a lot of stuff that a deck could do and this deck actually can attack at multiple angles it's not just gogeta 7 that can win you the game but you have stuff like at all cost vegeta in the deck you have beyond darkness to meager in the deck so you have lots of things that you can do to win the game outside of gogeta 7 but gogeta 7 is the hammer that is the big bad that is what we were trying to get down so you need the deck list itself. There's a unique split. Uh, the amount of black cards I'm running, I'm running the seven Dragon Balls, and then I'm running 16 other black cards. And the reason why is because I want to really be able to make sure that Beyond Darkness to Migra is live without using all seven Dragon Balls. And I've done that in testing a few times already. Uh, where basically I have seven Dragon Balls in the drop, but at the same time, I have seven black cards. Because all four of your Super Combos are black, your Crisis Crushers are black, your Shinrons are black, your World Pieces are black cards. You know, And then the latest edition was adding the Singleton Power Burst over the fourth Whis Coercion, and I'll explain the logic behind that here in a second. But really, you have the ability to get those seven cards in the drop area so you can activate Dark Overrealm without actually having to remove your seven Dragon Balls in the game. So if you get your threat down first, so let's, let's say for instance... I have a, a threat that survived the last turn. So let's say I played like a Gogeta 7 and then I pass. I didn't attack my opponent and now they can't deal with it. Well, the next turn I can then activate Shinron Ultimate on the Gogeta, let it swing three times. Uh, and then at the same time, I can play the Beyond the, the Beyond Darkness Demigra to then overwhelm the rest of the cards if I have seven black cards on the drop. And then now my opponent is basically locked out. There's nothing they can do. And then on top of that, the other part of the win condition that really helps is if you get at least one Shinron figure of majesty on the board. Shinron figure of majesty, basically, a lot of people like to use the untap two draw, and they do it almost instinctively. Like, that's the thing that they always top to do. Whereas me, I'm a huge fan of the plus 5k and crit uh, because it just pressures the opponent so hard. Like, if, they, if you know that you can start going for lethal, you can just take your opponent from nine to zero straight up with this card. Uh, I do. I've done it with at all cost if the game has ever gone long, and you know my opponent hasn't awakened yet because I just don't really attack them until I start getting down to business to defeat the Huns. 
But in general, at all costs, Vegeta plus Shinron Figure of Majesty. If you have Vegeta 7 plus Shinron Figure of Majesty. I even played a game where I did Shinron Figure of Majesty and gave plus 5k in crit to Beyond Darkness to Migra. So I was able to strip my opponent's hand, and they had to take triple strike crit to the face. So they had no way to remove the Migra on the next turn, and at the same time, they had no resources in their hand whatsoever, and they got none of the guards that I attacked them with. So that's a really sweet interaction that you have in the deck. My fusion package is pretty simple. I only play four and four, so four Gokus, four Vegetas, uh, four fusioning, and that's four sneak attack Vegeta because I just think it's one of the best attackers in the game, especially if you're playing against Janimba and you need to apply early pressure. You can't attack them with things that give them cards. You need to basically attack them with things that denies them any sort of resources. So quick thinking, go take sneak attack Vegeta. Those cards are going to be key, and so I like being able to have this in the deck as some sort of attacker as opposed to relying on just playing bad cards to make my deck work, if that makes sense. And then I play four Gokus. I play two preface of recovery son goku only the promo version because it's beautiful and then two sneak attacks on goku the two sneak attacks on goku is really just meant to be some condition on like you know some unconditional removal so if my opponent for some reason plays a cell seven drop you can just sneak attacks on goku pop the seven drop back to their hand and then now all those other pieces are in the drop area and they don't have a cell seven anymore and you just got to do it for three energy you know and it only costs you one card to do so but more often than not, that's never really going to happen. I'm just going to play an Ultimate Fusion Gogeta instead and just get the, the huge swing where I get the bottom deck the, the threat and then draw two cards. But it's an option. It's there. And then, of course, um, as I said before, I don't play any like of the 20k Gokus or Vegetas because I know most people are like, well, at all costs, you you know, that's a Vegeta in your deck. He uses his fusion target. At all costs is too good. It's, a t it's too messed up of a Dragon Ball Super card to use it as... A fusion piece like if i if i ever have to even charge one of these i'm upset so if i have to think about you know discarding it to fusion that just kind of makes me sick so i'd rather just use the 15ks to do so and that means i actually get to play better cards in my deck i don't have to play just a really bad two drop 20k goku uh, or the vegeta in order to make it work i just get to play really good cards that are actually castable and impact the board when i cast them so that's the reason why i kind of go with that logic and then I got two at all cost Vegeta, like I said. It's probably the best battle card in the game, the best attacker in the game, one of the best finishers. I don't have battering laser in this deck, so if I ever want to actually attack with at all cost for a game, I really kind of need to clear the way first or kind of just make sure I'm not playing against a deck that could either be playing Nimbus or Mafuba, just in case. Um, or I have to resolve it after I play a Gogeta Hero Revive. So I'm kind of forced into, like I said, making sure I clear the way first. And I'm doing a 3 3 split with my Gogetas, three Ultimate Fusion Gogeta, three Gogeta Hero Revived. I don't want to play more than four copies of each. I mean, more than three copies of each. I don't want to have to... Ch if, if I ever have to charge one, I want to make sure I still have options in deck or life to be able to make sure I can play another one copy of these cards. And both cards are so incredibly impactful. Ultimate Fusion Gogeta just as a huge tempo swing because of the way it can kind of reset the board. So if your opponent has two threats down that you're worried about, you can bottom deck those and you get to draw two cards clean off of it. And then, of course, Gogeta 7 is just, like I said, it's the namesake of the deck. This is why you play the deck. This is why, you know... You play Shenron because of the way that he works, you know, in tandem with these with maintaining high life total, so the sparking 10 doesn't really affect you, you know, having to crit yourself. But in general, the card is just insane. There's no way your opponent can deal with it uh, outside of chain attack Zeno, but once you make them shuffle up and draw three cards, the likelihood of them drawing that relatively low, and just the way that the card works, you know, barrier, deflect, it's just too good. 30k, triple strike, it's just going to... It's just going to win games. And so combine that with, of course, Shenron, figure of majesty if you want to give it crit, and then, of course, your Shenron leader to give it triple attack. Uh, there's not many games where you're going to lose where you play this card. So all you have to do when you play this deck is actually just be really smart. Uh, don't leave yourself dead to things. Uh, this deck does have really bad matchups, of course. It, it's going to have a bad matchup against Hero Storm, and I know that's everyone's going to be their first argument is, like, why you'd play a deck that has a bad matchup against Hero Storm. That's because... With the diversity of the format, you're going to be able to play decks like this, and you're just going to be able to win like tons of rounds because you're just not going to run into Hero Storm. A lot of people hate playing that deck, and that's something you need to take into account is that when you go to a tournament, you know, there might be one spike there that's trying to win by playing Hero Storm, but everyone knows that he exists. Everyone knows how to play against the deck, and they're still going to be able to win. Not everybody is Jordan Markle, you know. Not everybody is the best player with Storm, so you don't really need to worry about it. This is a really good deck to kind of take your local shop if you're looking to clean up. There are some things that you can do to kind of tweak it for best of one, uh, but this is the main deck configuration that I like if you wanted to go into a best of three series. And then, of course, we could work on sideboarding at a later date. Uh, and then 
tournaments, but in general, the deck has just been really solid overall. You play three World Peace. Uh, World Beast is just going to be a way to get back the cards that are impactful for you. So most of the time it's going to be to get a Shenron Figure Majesty back and add a Claws back or Ultimate Fusion Gogeta. If the game does go late, you can grab back a Gogeta Hero Revived. Uh, but more often than not, that's not, not really going to happen, but it can. So just be prepared to have, make that play if you have the option. We have the Negate Split, like I talked about. Three weeks Coercion, one Power Burst. So the reason why I don't play the fourth coercion and I play the first power burst is because I believe the first power burst is better because it's free. <laughs> because, you know, there's often times where you're going to have to tap out in this deck and you just want to make sure that you're not dead to something or you're only going to have access to one energy or you're going to have access to just a Sinsu Bean and no negates, whatever, and you're just going to want to make sure that you have the power burst in a pinch. So if you're tapped out, it's the perfect card for you, whereas Weast Corrosion doesn't allow you to do that. So if you're ever playing against an aggressive strategy and you're worried about kind of leaving yourself dead to one attacker, you just want to make sure that you have the power burst as opposed to the Weast Corrosion so it allows you the most, you know, effectiveness on your turns. Because this deck is, you know, it still wants to maintain some sort of tempo. It doesn't want to just get blown out on every turn of the game. Like, you're going to give up early game tempo. Like, that's just what you do. You're playing a slower strategy that revolves around ramping. You're giving up the early turns of the game so that you can make sure your turn 4, 5, 6, and 7 are the best out there. So you have to give that up. And so that's why I like having the free negate in the deck, just so if you ever have to tap out on your turn to play a 4-drop, a 5-drop, you know, if you ever have to play the 7-drop Gogeta Hero Revived, you want to make sure you just have something on the backswing so you, you're not dead to something. Especially if, for some reason if your opponent, you know, they shuffle up and draw 3, you know, your life totals down to 3, and they're trying to pressure you, and you can stop them from doing so. Or they play a Mira, and you know they don't have battering because they only have three cards in hand, like, you're going to want to make sure you have that free negate if you've just tapped out, just kind of defend yourself. Uh, and, of course, like I said, it's just it's just going to be better than the fourth coercion more often than not. And it helps our black count, because it's up to 16 black cards, which just makes it really easy to play Beyond Darkness to Migra. And then two Dragon Radar. This is more so a utility card. I mostly, most of the time, you just use it for a draw two. If anything... Especially if you're playing it's a new sort of cell chain deck, hand destruction deck, it's really good. And it's just really good in your early turns. Because if you're ever just playing in, in the fair matchup, you just want to power through your deck. You just play Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball. You have one energy up on your turn. You tap it. You then Dragon Raider. You draw two more cards. And that kind of helps you really set up your objection turns even more. Because you just have so many cards in hand that objection doesn't hurt you. And then to add to that, we play the full four objections because you need to see it. You need to see an objection or two. If you see two, you're just gonna you're just gonna steamroll your opponent. There's nothing they can do. They're gonna be so far behind on energy. Your plays are just gonna be better, faster than they can do anything. But you really need to see objection, and you really want to play four because you want to see the second objection in pretty much every game that you play this deck, especially against droids, you know, or just you know the major matchups in general. If you're playing against the Child's Wish Mirror, so they're playing Child's Wish strategies, you know, and they're able to go fast, you want to make sure that you have objection so you can just kind of get way ahead, and then that gets you to your ultimate fusion Gogeta fast. So you can bottom deck their two cards that they had just played with their Child's Wish, and you kind of reset the game, which is where exactly where you need to be before you start deploying, deploying your bombs. But in general, this is the deck. It's been doing incredibly well in testing so far. Hasn't really lost that often. If it ever loses, uh, it's mostly just because a, a deck like perfectly curved out. So, for instance, like playing the Child's Wish Mirror, uh, they... You know, they played a, they had two Child's Wishes in hand on turn two. They Child's Wished a Threat into play. Energy, you know, energy, a quick thing can go tanks. They then flipped, brought the Child's Wish back. They then played Child's Wish again to get a Sneak Attack Vegeta. They then swung with both cards. And then so they just start pressuring. And they just played it again the following turn with more threats, like a Source of Power Sun Goku. So they got to attack one, two, three, four times. And then if that turn happens, you don't get to a double ejection. You don't hit Ultimate Fusion Gogeta. You're just going to lose. You know, there's nothing you really do about that. But in games where that anomaly doesn't happen in the Child's Wish matchup, this deck is heavily favored. So just keep that in mind. And then, of course, if you're playing against Storm, you're probably going to lose, but you can try not to. Uh, like, you know, with, if, you know, four negates and four sensor beans in the deck, you have a chance. Droid's matchup is basically free. Hercule matchup is free. The Chain Zeno matchup, it really just depends on the way the, the flow of the game goes. If you commit too much to your board and get punished by the Chain Zeno, you're probably going to lose. If you don't and you just wait... Um, to really kind of outvalue them. So if they deploy threats and you get to respond to them with your ultimate fusion Gogeta, take that opportunity to do so, especially if you get to world piece it into play so you can leave your energy up if they do chains into you to kind of reset the game again. But in general, that matchup is pretty easy, pretty fair. Janimba matchup is basically free as well. Uh, 
you're not really attacking them, and sometimes if you, you know, if you, the game goes to the point where you get a Shinron for your Majesty on board, you're just going to give your biggest threat crit and then kill them. You know, you're going to take them from 9 to 0 pretty easily. Uh, or in general, you're just going to go G to 7 them and then just win the game off of the back of go G to 7 because they can't defend themselves. And as, you know, uh, I don't know if Danny Wynn has talked about it yet, but I'm posting an article by Danny Wynn this week. Uh, he talks about the reason why you kill Janimbo when they're at 6 life as opposed to 5. It's pretty good reasoning for it, so you guys can read that in the article. It's going up tomorrow on the Patreon page. But in general, this has been a video that has taken way longer than I thought it would. I hope you enjoyed the insight. hope you enjoyed the deck list. Hopefully you can win some games at your shop. Start taking home those tournament packs and those sweet, Sweet Crisis Crushers, and maybe some of those like pieces of paper that say you're really good at the game. Just like do what you can, win, and I'll continue to post deck profiles and stuff on the Patreon page. Going back to doing that again this week, uh, now that I'm refreshed and back into delivering the best content on the planet. Shout out to Shinron's Lair. Love you guys. Shout out to Alec Pastrana. He's still the best shop owner on the planet. Shout out to PPG. Thank them for everything that they're doing to help us at Shinron's Lair. And just check them out. Thank you guys again so much for everything. Thank you for your support. Hope you have a good week. I'll see you again real soon. Okay, bye!